The nursery industry of the United States has grown from its embryonic beginning on Long Island in 1737 to a multi-million dollar nationwide complex of businesses today. It is composed of many interrelated parts, including nurseries that produce plants, landscape firms that use plants and related materials to develop attractive and functional landscapes, garden centers that sell plant materials and garden-related items, plus maintenance firms that specialize in maintaining plants and landscaped areas. I'm Dr. DeBusk, and in this video, I'll discuss the nursery industry, including its classification, function, production areas, and allied areas. The nursery industry in Florida is located in three distinct areas of the state as a result of its peninsular topography and its associated climactic zones. The southern east coast nurseries located in Dade, Browdard, and Palm Beach counties produce most of the tropical foliage plants and subtropical materials used in Florida's beautiful indoor and outdoor landscapes. The central region produces the hardier subtropical material, citrus, container-grown trees and shrubs, as well as foliage used for indoor landscapes. Apopka, located in the center of the state, is known as the foliage capital of the nation. Florida continues to lead the United States in tropical foliage production, accounting for 63% of the national total production in 1997. In the northern region, particularly in Baker County, camellias and azaleas are produced as well as many of the hardier ornamental plants associated with the gracious landscapes of the south. Although the state plant board lists some 4,000 certified nurseries, most of the state's $444 million in the sale of nursery products was produced by less than 25% of the nurseries, and most of the production was container-grown foliage plants. Florida leads the nation in the production of tropical foliage and citrus plants. Trade organizations that serve the nursery industry are primarily focused on the functional aspect of the business and, to some degree, the type of plant material produced. If you are in Florida and interested in the industry, it is recommended to join the Florida Nursery Growers and Landscape Association. They hold trade shows and provide education and certification programs. They invest in research for the industry. They are the political leader representing Florida environmental horticulture and agriculture at the local state and federal levels. They also provide discounts to services and you can use Plant Ant, Plant and Product Locator for free. What is a plant nursery? It is a place where hardy trees, shrubs, ground covers, vines, and herbaceous plants are propagated and grown. Nurseries in the United States are very diversified and may be classified and described according to four major criteria, ownership, function, production system, and type of plant material produced. Nurseries are owned and operated either by private industry, private not-for-profit institution, or by various governmental agencies and educational institutions. Within the private sector, they may be a proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation. Governmental agencies operate nurseries to support part or all of their plant material needs, to furnish planting stock for various reforestation and conservation programs, and for quarantine purposes. Private not-for-profit institutions are frequently operated for plant conservation and preservation purposes. Educational institutions operate nurseries to support their many and diverse programs in research, teaching, extension, and to landscape their campuses. What is the function of the nursery? It is often aimed at who is the customer. Production nurseries propagate and or produce plants for a variety of purposes, including fruit production, environmental quality improvement programs, conservation projects, and research and educational programs. Production nurseries may be either profit or non-profit oriented. Those that are profit oriented are in the private sector of the industry. The non-profit production nurseries are operated by various private agencies, governmental agencies, and educational institutions. Those that are profit oriented can be subclassified as either retail or wholesale production. Retail production nurseries are generally small in size, commonly 50 acres or less and sell their production directly to the ultimate user. In most cases, it's homeowners. Wholesale production nurseries are primarily large establishments that sell their plants in wholesale units to industry-related buyers. For example, landscape contractors, garden centers, into parks, golf courses, cemeteries, etc. 
Wholesale production nurseries may specialize in a particular type of plant material and are located in areas where climate and soil are most favorable for production. Some production nurseries do not propagate their plants and may purchase them from nurseries that specialize in seedlings. They grow them up to a suitable size for the customer. My mom watches HSN all the time, and she has ordered plants through them. So the function of a nursery that provides products for HSN may be a mail order nursery. Mail order nurseries deliver the products that they produce via the US mail or parcel services. They, their contact with customers is primarily through catalogs and literature sent directly to the customer or advertisements placed with one or more of the mass communication media. Most of the materials is herbaceous perennials, small fruit, or small trees and shrubs. Potted material is grown and shipped in lightweight medium to reduce shipping costs. Landscape nurseries design and construct attractive and functional landscape using resources available within the organization. Modern landscape firms are staffed with designers that produce the landscape plants, growers that produce the plant material, and construction specialists who carry out the plants. Landscape nurseries produce woody ornamental plants that are typically larger than those available from most wholesale production nurseries. However, they seldom produce all their plant material needed and usually supplement their production by pr purchasing smaller, readily available material from other nurseries. Some landscape nurseries subcontract parts of a landscape project to other firms. For example, it is common to subcontract lawn work to a lawn specialist in large pools, patios, and sun decks to a building contractor. A horticulture distribution center, HDC, is a nursery whose primary function is to locate, purchase, and assemble in a convenient location landscape plants, which in turn are resold to landscape growers or contractors. The HDC takes title to the plant material and either holds it in a sales yard or grows it in a nursery to enhance quality prior to sale. The center may also stock for resale various items associated with planting, for example, peat moss, tree wrap, mulch, etc. Quarantine nurseries are, as the name implies, nurseries where plants are held during a period of quarantine. They are operated by federal or state agencies charged with the responsibility of administering federal and state laws related to the importation of plants. Not-for-profit organizations such as botanical gardens frequently have a portion of their land designated as a plant quarantine nursery, which is regularly inspected by appropriate governmental agencies. On the basis of production systems, nurseries may be classified as either field production or container production. Field production nurseries may be subclassified by the method used in digging and processing their plants, which may be either bare root or soil bald. Plants that are dug bare root have the soil removed from their roots as they are harvested, whereas soil bald plants are dug with an undisturbed soil ball around the roots, which is then contained in some manner. The most common method to contain soil bald plants is to secure the soil ball with burlap, known in the industry as bald and burlap, BMB. Other methods include boxing, potting, and basketing. Growing plants in containers has been practiced for centuries, but container production of plants in the nursery is a relatively modern practice. Since the early 1950s, it has evolved into a highly scientific and successful method of nursery production. It is an excellent example of growers and scientists working together in solving problems and developing a highly effective and efficient system of growing and marketing plants in containers. Did you know that in the early development of container production of plants, growers used tin cans, tar paper pots, and standard clay pots as the container? The growing medium was whatever field soil was readily available. We now know that field soil is not the best for container growing and is really heavy. Since the 1950s, the containers are no longer the rusted food cans of the early years, but are designed and manufactured especially for the nursery industry. Metal containers are crimped so that they can nest for shipping and storage and are dipped in a ru rust-proof paint so that they last for two or more years and make an attractive market container. Although more commonly, nurseries use plastic containers. Plastic containers up to 300 gallons in size 
may be obtained that serve various needs, including thin wall for inexpensive short-term crops and thick wall for long-term crops and for stacking during transport. When it comes to container production, there are several advantages. It produces more uniform plants. This is a result of providing optimum conditions for growth of the plants in a more pest-free environment. For example, medium, nutrition, water, light, and spacing. It provides a method of producing plants that are difficult to transplant. A greater number of plants are produced per unit area, which avoids the need of land in rotation, cover crops, and reduces the loss of plants due to cultivator injury. It permits use of areas normally not usable for field production and avoids the digging operation. It also improves cash flow and invested capital has a faster turnover rate. It provides for a greater potential for mechanization of material handling. For example, potting, pickup, and delivery to and from the production site. There are also many container production challenges. There needs to be a greater attention to artificial irrigation requirements, offset by greater control of moisture levels, or the plants can decline quickly. The size and shape of the container may limit root development, which can cause the potential for container bound and or circling roots. Plants need to be repotted if they're not used on schedule. There is a greater need for winter protection due to inability of pots to insulate well. There is also the greater need to supplement and monitor levels of chemical supplements, and with that, they need to leach medium periodically to avoid excess soluble salts. The soil and pots also need good water drainage. On some sites, it's necessary to develop wastewater disposal systems. Finally, it is a relatively high cost production system, offset with improved cash flow. There are also marketing advantages and challenges for container marketing. The advantages include reduces transportation costs due to lightweight medium. It extends marketing season for both wholesale and retail as well as the planting season. Containers are a co convenient prepackaged cash and carry item. They are relatively easy to maintain with water and fertilizer in the sales area with no need to mulch. They provide a better display of plants. Finally, there is less handling damage since workers tend to carry plants and pots by the container rather than their tops. The marketing challenges include the medium has a tendency to dry out faster, requiring greater attention to watering. Plants in unsightly containers are unattractive to customers. And container bound or circling roots, if present, limit growth and life expectancy of plants in landscaped areas. In review, what are the advantages and challenges of container production? Pause the video here and see if you can sort the advantages and challenges based on these categories. Does your list look like mine? If not, read the description I put or go back in the video to review the information. The text in black are related to production, purple is related to marketing, and orange is related to both. Nurseries can also be classified and described on the basis of the types of plant material they produce. Historically, the early nurseries of the nation produced fruit plants for the developing nation. Gradually, they included plants for landscaping and as the need developed, they produced seedlings of forest tree species for the forest industries and plants with special characteristics for conservation purposes and erosion control. When a nursery produces species from two or more of the categories, it is best classified as a general nursery, producing a catalog of diversified hardy plants. Some wholesale production nurseries grow only one type of plant material, such as shade trees, evergreens, shrubs, roses, or herbaceous perennials. Some specialize in one or two genera. Other nurseries specialize in the production of seedlings for reforestation, conservation, and Christmas tree plantations. There are also nurseries that specialize in propagating materials for other nurseries. These are often called propagation nurseries and they produce liner plants. Liner plants may include dwarf rootstocks, grafted plants, rooted cuttings, seedlings, or shade tree whips. These firms are mostly located in the major 
nursery production areas, or on sites that provide a major climactic advantage. Within the industry, there are a number of businesses that are closely allied to nursery production. They do not produce, but buy, sell, and distribute plant material or provide a closely related service. Landscape contractors perform the major construction operations associated with the development of large landscapes. Nursery brokers are independent sales agents whose primary function is to arrange purchase sales agreements between members of the nursery industry. The modern garden center is the outgrowth of the small retail nursery sales lot or fruit stands of the pre-World War II years. Mass merchandisers and discount stores that mass market all types of products also have a nursery department for the sale of trees, shrubs, fertilizers, bedding plants, and related items. Landscape management environmental care firms, as the name implies, specializes in maintaining the landscape plannings for individuals and businesses. In conclusion, you can see that this organizational chart, how the nursery industry is set up from plant development to the local customer. Each plays a part in the production of the plant for the end user.